Alright, welcome to another edition of What the Fuck Happenings Here in Mendham, but not really. Not technically. Alright, anyway. Comments, I think, mostly. Um, start with uh, what came to my mind, <laughs> right, this week. Um, I'd seen some scene, I had, I had viewed, <laughs> but anyway. Some uh, videos, old ones, <clears throat> just cleaning the computer a little, um, which I haven't had time to do. And um, <clears throat> Praying Mantis video that I had taken at the old in Mendham location. And um, no Praying Mantis is here. It was just, <clears throat> you know, the horror of it in the sense that it's kind of the worst way to be killed, right? I mean, you get grabbed and then somebody just slowly eats you to death. And, um, you know, the fact that it just sort of illustrates that there's nothing built in. There's no, you know, people try to rationalize and, you know, say, oh, there's this mechanism that keeps things from getting too horrible. Um, you know, that somehow the lions kill you right away because they, you know, they're sort of designed to make sure their food doesn't get away. So they want to try to make it immobile and dead as quickly as possible. So they then, generally speaking, try to rip open something around the neck or suffocate it by crushing its windpipe and all that kind of stuff. And so it's, oh, that's not so bad. Well, it is pretty bad. And it doesn't work out that way most of the time, blah, 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 blah. So it's all kind of just bullshit. Um, and then with praying mantises, it's just so obvious. And so you're just saying, well, if these were bigger things, these praying mantises, and this went on, and humans were the victims, uh, you know, we, we wouldn't think the game was all that great. Um, you know, the get eaten by a praying mantis game. Uh, and uh, we would really find it painful if we had to watch somebody we cared about being killed by a praying mantis. Um, <clears throat> and all of that. So I'm just saying, it's just this, unfortunately, it happens in this small world that we don't see, that we just step on, most people. And um, so the call can be ignored. But when you add it up, it's just an obscene amount of slow, horrible death that goes on. And this is just the slow, horrible death caused by one tiny fraction of the horrible, slow, horrible death machine. And uh, so, I mean, you know, it, it reminds you just how insensitive you are in the sense that how much you're not seeing. And... Uh, how much of what you aren't seeing um, is just horrible. Light. Anyway, um, that's what it does for me, anyway. is uh, It cycles those kinds of thoughts. And, um, you know, the I wouldn't accept it as the rules of the game. Um, and then that gets you thinking about what you accept as the rules of the game. And, and how I sort of rejected them right from the start. I didn't really think, um, um, you know, this living a life thing was going to be a fun ride. I mean, I had a real pessimism going into everything uh, because nothing seemed um, reasonable. I mean, it just seemed kind of, can't say unfair, but um, there seemed to be this assumption <laughs> that... Um, you know, I don't deserve better, that kind of thing. Um, and I suppose there was some religion thrown in there in the sense that when you asked about the unfairness of stuff, you always got some kind of silly answer like it's God's will or whatever. And, you know, it's just, well, who, why, why is we letting that guy control things then? Because his will sucks. Um, those obvious, you know, to me they're obvious um, retorts, uh, responses. To the silliness of God says so. Well, who made him king? Um, you know, it just comes to mind. Came to my mind. Um, but anyway, and then it gets into this whole thing of, you know, how you become a personality and what your personality is going to be. It, you know, it was I was already heading for a brick wall and I kind of knew it. And so... Um, uh, so it reminds me of feral cats because you see them... Their, their insane overreaction, you know, even in kittens, you know, where they just, they know people are bad news, and they just run, and, um, 
you know, and it's hard to break that psychology once, you know, you're just trying to, you're trying to help them and you can't even help them because they're so deathly afraid of you, you know, for, and, and the reason has to be these little subtle reasons, little subtle associations where you're associated with noises and, you know, cars and things. And so, <clears throat> you know, it makes sense that they would have a, uh, an apprehension uh, even if they weren't necessarily personally mistreated by a human. Um, and clearly the adult cats teach the little ones what to be afraid of and all that kind of crap and blah, blah, blah. So some of it's just hysteria. Uh, but it's reasonable that organisms would be hysterical about things because the real world has all of this real danger in it and you have to be um, programmed to not make mistakes because every mistake can be fatal. Uh, you know, it's you're not playing a video game. You can't just hit the reload button. Uh, anyway, um, you know, that just gets to other thoughts, you know, about humans and uh, their <clears throat> why they don't have the same, well, you know, why the feral cat is sort of a generic. <laughs> they all sort of behave alike. And why aren't humans reacting to the world in any kind of similar way? Um, but then you could argue that they almost are. And the way is, unfortunately, you know, this silly um, survival at all costs, um, keep throwing fuel on, you know, your house fire. <laughs> you know, just keep, keep uh, drilling holes in the boat, you know, the kind of asshole that runs the world. Uh, but anyway, the the prevailing uh, human mindset or whatever is an idiot, uh, frankly. Anyway, um, some other thing I wanted to bring up, but it's lost at the moment, and maybe it'll be refound. But who cares, really? Um, so the general point is, is that yes, it's just. I mean, people are going to rationalize anything. And I'm just saying that, you know, when you think about millions of years of organisms ripping each other apart, mostly each other's children, <laughs> you know, um, it's just obscene. And why should that be acceptable to anyone? Why should any thinking machine brain say, Oh yes, that's a great game. Let's make many, many, many zillions of times more losers than anything that could be called a winner. And the winner would be somebody who died quickly, right? Um, and, you know, lived sufficiently, let's say, without harsh disease or disability. Um, and, you know, it's, it's not much to win. Uh, but anyway, it's just horrible. So, some guy from Iraq. I'm from Iraq, against life and against human beings. Uh, yeah, I've, you know, I've, I've been a few people from those countries, Iraq, Iran, and um, uh, Pakistan. Uh, you know, and I should be more communicative. Sorry to all the people who I do not, I haven't, you know, I just haven't been a, <laughs> you know, I just haven't fully... Um, stabilized and uh, so I just haven't done any personal things <laughs> you know in some ways I'm just evading um, acknowledging my uh, the person I was isn't the person I have to be now so um, I guess there's some sort of something like that going on in my head where I'm just evading accepting change or something and um, some of it will be in my face and interact I don't know I don't know what it is it's just some psychology thing I presume I will get over it eventually and get around to some older routines I'm just busy too I guess that's it it's busy it's, it's complicated adjusting <laughs> yeah it seems like work uh, yeah, that's what it is. Um, so yes, I'm too busy. I'll say that. 
even though it doesn't look like I'm too busy a lot of the time I'm busy internally it's busy so anyway cares does matter let's listen to Gary I don't know I guess you could say something like that fine uh, hey and Mendem got any tips for studying uh, I, I can logically know I have to do it but it's so tedious yeah um, so I said that somewhere I suppose um, you know uh, um, some came in somewhere but it is just playing this game with psychology right because certain things are entertaining if they're done a certain way right if it's a I mean for me it helps if it's a chick doing it kind of thing you know if it's an instruction video and a chick's showing you how okay it sort of you know makes it more interesting um, so you got to do little things I suppose to turn whatever it is you have to learn into something you actually give a shit to know and so sometimes I guess that's the challenge is just to try to pretend that uh, it's some other game you're playing you know you're not like learning history you're learning I don't know uh, the Kama Sutra or something you know so you have to just kind of take whatever your interest is and kind of smash it into what you're doing enough to make it a challenge or, or even just do that you make it a challenge so somehow you just overtly challenge yourself and say uh, this is a contest and how fast can I learn how to do it or how you know and sometimes that competitive thing will get you going so if you can somehow come up with a personal thing to give yourself a personal incentive I mean, those are, you know, there's lots of stupid little tricks you can do. You know, you can make some rule that you can't have any snacks until you do it, or some other kind of stupid thing, you know. Uh, sad that we are creatures of habit, which is constructed mostly out of our control. Right, I mean, most of our, <laughs> all of us, uh, everything we do is controlled by these subtle influences and subtle motivations and demotivations you know somebody puts you in a good mood somebody puts you in a bad mood I mean I'm sort of aware of that I mean I, I uh, overtly you know with some intention don't think about it too much because I don't want to censor what I say because I'm afraid it's going to affect people in some kind of negative way and not make them you know get through their day better um, but I'm aware of the fact that all these influences that are really what we're a byproduct of so it's like uh, I have less control over me in terms of my psychology than the bugs outside or some assholes making noise um, you know which brings up another thing that was just happened yesterday where they had some event at the park and it's a quarter mile away or something like that pretty far I mean far enough away that you sh it shouldn't be shaking the house and it's like uh, you know you and so you call the cops and say hey you know they're making this outrageous noise it's shaking the freaking house I mean and they're basically oh well it's a sanctioned event so fucking what <laughs> why does that give us the right to make all this racket um, and, you know, they just give you excuses, and you're just saying, yeah, th obviously they just changed the law, so it just depends on who's making noise, and they have a different, you know, all of a sudden they found the rules that say you can't make that much fucking noise. And so whatever it was, it was obviously something the cops had some interest in. They were getting, you know, maybe they're getting a little bit of extra money out of it or something. Um, but outrageously loud, and you're saying, who the fuck could actually be at that event? It's so loud. What the kind? What kind of creatures am I living with that could find this at all acceptable? That this is what they want their entire Saturday ruined, in the sense they can't sit in their own yard or they can't do anything, without this oppressive. You know, it's not like it was. Uh, I mean, the good thing was it wasn't. It wasn't. <laughs> you know, it wasn't specialty music. I mean, it wasn't just '60s music or something, or it wasn't rap music or it wasn't some, it was but it was some sort of generic pop weird it even had some religious tones I think yeah you know, there was some song some guy was singing about kneeling and God or something and you're just like well whatever the agenda was um, but you're just saying who are the assholes organizing this or you know doing this shit and they're making all this fucking racket and they're saying uh, somehow this is obscenely loud I mean 
it's got to ruin people's hearing to be there. It's got to. I mean, it's blowing the little hairs off their freaking, you know, inner ear. <laughs> you know, it just, for what? It just, you know, anyway, you can't make any sense out of it. And so you're just saying, how dumb are the creatures you're living with? You know, oh. anyway, um, so, uh, so, uh, but obviously this is a conditioned thing, right? I mean, so obviously some people are somehow conditioned to think that this makes sense. Uh, some people say you have to be passionate about something to do it, but passion is overrated and most of our passions don't lead to anything productive. Well, I would argue that that's not really true. Um, and passion just comes out of, you know, aggression and defense. You know, it's the fight or flight kind of thing. And, you know, these physiological reactions, what feels good, what feels bad, um, you know, all of that kind of crap. And so... Um, yeah, I, I think that's, you do have to pretend, <laughs> you know, if, if to, to do it. So I guess you have to create incentive of some kind. So, and that incentive is always going to be related to either, you know, something you like or something you dislike. You know, disincentive and incentive. But anyway, uh, quite sad that we can so easily devote our lives to the most trivial things like sports, but the real productive work is so much more taxing. Well, again, it's tr the trivial part is just a matter of cultural triviality. The culture is trivial, therefore the pursuits are trivial. If the culture emphasized and rewarded people obvi in obvious ways um, with big money contracts and you know publicity and you know backstories and all that kind of stuff for you know getting an A on your test or something. Um, then, you know, the culture would bend in those directions. And obviously we just, we have a culture that celebrates um, common man bullshit and, um, you know, doing stuff, the common denominator kind of celebrity. We want to, we want to, it's a special Olympics is what it is. And um, it just doesn't um, in any way reward anything but retarded behavior uh, in many ways. Um, but I mean, th those are just addictions of the past generation that they just impose on the next generation. So those addictions are just a, you know, the, the throwback to a time when um, might did make right, um, you know, and strength was, physical strength was something to admire or something that was even useful. Um, now it's, you know, you, you don't, you can knock down buildings and you know weigh 58 pounds you know and you don't have to you don't have to physically do it you just have to have enough muscles to press a button or to you know control a joystick or something so it's a different kind of world and different things should be valued and clearly um our culture is lagging way behind in terms of um you know rewarding and punishing. I mean, I still can't believe some asshole last week's, you know, <laughs> reward and punishment doesn't work when, I mean, that brings up animals again. Of course, every animal trainer in the world is always constantly rewarding um, their performing creatures um, because it works. Duh. All right. Oh, this is a nice little uh, racist thing. So we'll play with the racist a little. Um, blacks have been like that forever. So, so apparently something I'm saying, uh, he's turning into a black thing, not a culture thing. Um, but whatever. Uh, it, it just doesn't matter anymore. I mean, you, there's no... Um, I mean, there's no arguing because the people have ruined the argument. The the crazies on the one side, again, the ones saying there's no such thing as male and female or something in this whole feminism argument or some other kind of crap. And they're just so insanely on the wrong side. And they're arguing from such a silly position, you know, that we shouldn't even account for any differences between men and women when, of course, there's physical differences. Let's just pretend they don't exist either. I mean, that's just stupid. Um, you know, <laughs> there's no differences that should matter when it comes to some things, a lot of things. <laughs> okay, the differences are irrelevant. Um, clearly, some things, it still matters. 
and they just can't get it. So, I mean, you have, you know, morons on one side saying males is intrinsically better than them dumb females, and then you have the other idiots on the other side arguing from some position where nobody is anything, which is just stupid. Anyway, their culture, see, that's a key word, culture, culture, culture. Yes, the the, the um, standards of behavior, the traditions, the uh, habits, those things are important. And, you know, if we, you know, we have, in fact, you know, found primitive cultures and they were doing horrible things to their children, like, you know, knocking their teeth out and doing different things. And it's just kind of obvious that, oh, well, you know, this is kind of stupid. Let's not, you know, you shouldn't. You shouldn't be doing that to your your spawn. Um, you know, you could you could find things in their culture that were just wrong and stupid and kind of just wrong, just bad, dumb, stupid. You know, because you know, throwing the virgin into the volcano or something. I mean, if we found some culture that was still throwing virgins into volcanoes, I mean, we'd certainly stop it because it's just plain stupid. And so, yes, there's cultures that now exist among us where the culture is depraved. I mean, it's just fucking, there's no culture. It's a culture of asshole. I mean, they're almost celebrating how big an asshole can I be? And that's their culture. That's their identity is being, um, you know, like some, like, 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 uh, it's, it's almost like raising your kid to be a, uh, you know, an internet troll or something, you know, <laughs> it's just such a, it's so stupid. Uh, their culture is disgusting. Well, I'll, I'll concede that there is cultures that have just, that are, yes, too stupid. And we shouldn't, <laughs> we shouldn't uh, adopt any of their habits because all of their habits are stupid. Um, created from their own laziness and idiocy full of them, fully on them. Um, so again, well, this idea that it's their fault that they were raised to be uh, an asshole. Um, you know, that's the, uh, the whole question here. Is, is that their fault or is it their parents' fault? And so I would say you're pointing your finger at the wrong uh, menace. Uh, they sag, rap, listen to loud music, and cry their <coughs> cry of their poverty. Um, so yes, there, there's a real problem, you know, with um, this preaching that they get that somehow they've been cheated and they didn't lose a fair fight and you know they don't have to fight and they don't you know whatever so there's lots of people that have rationalizations for horrible behavior but I can find those people in in the category of you know I can find plenty of white people living in you know trailer parks in Idaho or something or Alabama or wherever and um you know, with banjos on their knees and whatever, uh, deliverance types, you know, you, know, you can find those too. So cultures that are just as depraved um, in terms of, you know, they uh, torture animals and do all kinds of horrible things. Um, anyway, uh, they have had every chance as me. Well, that's just physically not true. So, I mean, it's just obvious stupid thing to say I would argue uh, but regardless whatever doesn't matter uh, they need to pull themselves up from their bootstraps so that kind of rhetoric to me is just disgusting because that's like coming from probably some kind of Trump supporter right who glorifies people who inherit their pulled up bootstraps <laughs> you know um, I mean clearly you know and I, I really don't want to get into the whole thing about um, you know the, these sociological mechanisms but I mean you have to realistically understand that you know you you made the mess and since you're your you're kind you're <laughs> the people who thought they were inferior and kept them ignorant and kept them um, denied them a culture of their own essentially and um, and then when you freed them well would you free them into a world that embraced them no that was going to buy their stuff or going to live next door to them or do any of that kind of crap? No. So you freed them to live in the wilderness, essentially. Uh, a type of wilderness. Um, they didn't inherit anything. You know, they didn't get to ride on their family's 
um, what their family had acquired over time or any of that kind of crap. And so, you know, huge disadvantages. And, uh, you know, you don't think that has any effect on what the byproducts are. Um, and I say, of course it does. So you're, you're an idiot. All right. <clears throat> um, and stay away from our beautiful Aryan goddesses. So, I mean, that's just, you know, pure subjective crap. The pinnacle of human beauty. So like, somehow it's their fault that your Aryan goddesses want you to paint your penis black or something. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so so you, you want to force the women to like you? Is that it? Those women are for us in Mendham. So that's just, you know, I'm not one of you. Thank you. But no, thank you. America is the pinnacle of greatness. So obviously you haven't watched any of my videos or know nothing about me. Because obviously I would say that. I would say it's the pinnacle of the exploitnist. Um, anyway, America is created from hard work. Yes, mostly at the barrel of a gun. Okay, I mean, most of the Industrial Revolution, the part you're living on, a slavery cleared a tremendous amount of farmland that would have been useless land without the slaves and all that kind of stuff. So you can, you know, play this game that you did the work or Whitey did the work, but no, you had a bunch of imported people do the work. Um, like the railroads and the Chinese and you know you can go through all the examples um, where the hard work wasn't something you did the hard work was something you forced somebody else to do or you extorted them to do uh, created from hard work honor well there's no honor in, in slavery fairness well there's certainly no fairness in the um, you know exploiting uh, the overabundance of overpopulation and um, driving wages down. I mean, there's nothing fair intrinsically about not paying people what their work is really worth merely because you can take advantage of desperation. Uh, love for one's people and respect. So any of that crap doesn't exist. It was all a bunch of selfish, greedy fucks. That's it. So fuck you, you're an idiot. Uh, it's now being destroyed by these dumb black and brown people. Um, well, I'd, I'd say it was going to come to an end anyway, and there's an inevitable price you pay for those kinds of um, unsustainable curves you create in terms of your needs. You just keep getting bigger, um, and you just keep raping the well, you know, pumping the oil. It does run out. Uh, the game ends, and you've set up a bunch of unsustainable maintenance problems you know, like even the English in their castles and you know it's, somebody's got to clean the moat and blah 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 uh, we need to kick them all out and make America white again as God has intended so of course this God crap is just hilarious but whatever for we are the chosen race of the world God bless yeah, you're a phony and a fake and a fraud and so here you are talking all this stuff. So what are you? Is you're really just a disinformation function? Is it? Are you here merely to make anybody who finds a problem with cultural diversity and thinks yes, uh, why should we accept? Why should we say it's okay to be any kind of pig? Okay, <laughs> yo yo, yes, you have a shitting problem and can't help it. You have to shit, you know, on the table. No matter what kind of problem you have, it's okay. And even if it's not a problem, it's just something you like to do, it's somehow okay. Well, that's horse shit. And so you're just trying to make anybody who thinks there's anything called culture or anything valuable in um, advancing as a civilization, um, make them look bad, okay, you know, by perverting their message or something. Is that what you really are? You're just... You're just a liar for your cause, <laughs> you know. So, but anyway, fuck you. Uh, just, you know, preferably till dead and such. Because you're not making a useful contribution. Uh, you're not going to, you know, help anybody come to any kind of resolution about what the constructive path is from here. Yeah. Nope. No help at all. 
So, t- not that I have that uh, path in any sense, besides the path should be that we first say, holy fuck, things have gotten a little bit too chaotic. Um, you know, let's pause. You know, put a hold on, you know, <laughs> some of this bullshit because the property taxes are getting too high. You know, there's a point where you say it's just stupid. And it's like, here, it's getting that. It's stupid. I mean, I, I you know, don't, yeah, I don't really want to, <laughs> well, anyway, I don't want to, you know, have to be careful not to give away too much information. But, I mean, there's things going on just here in this village. They're just so retarded. Anyway, so two examples of nurture over nature is enough to prove your point that genetics doesn't, don't matter. Um... No, but how many examples do you want? I mean, you know, it's... I don't know how you logically can even form this idea that you think, un- unlike the, what the scientist would argue, you could take a human being from 200 or 300,000 years ago, and, you know, in his native environment, he's just some hairy brute. Um, but the fact is that you could, today put him in grammar school and high school and he would do just as well as we are you know he's he wasn't dumber we haven't we didn't advance intellectually incrementally that is our capacity to be human has been the same capacity for a very long time and it was just acquiring knowledge you know in the use of vocabulary that's all it was really about so it was the fact that our brain became <coughs> capable of holding a large enough language and that's what they sort of learned with the the Coco the Gorilla experiment was that Coco just couldn't quite learn enough words to really turn on the intelligence. The, it's the Helen Keller thing I've sort of described. There was a moment for Helen Keller, right? I mean, she's learning all these signs. She's doing all this stuff, but she was just mimicking it. And then there was a point where she realized that these 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 things <laughs> were words. And that these words, you know, that they describe the world. And that was a key thing. So when she figured out water, this was water or whatever, you know, then everything fell into place. And that's sort of what happened with humans. It's a small change in our brain, not a big change that made us smarter. Vocabulary is the whole thing. Without vocabulary, you can't organize anything. Your brain can't put it anything in the right filing cabinets and all that kind of shit. Anyway, um, so I guess the another argument for the nature over nurture thing would be... Um, oh, I thought of it just a second ago. Now I've lost it again. Uh, two examples of nurture over nature. Um, it should come to me, right? <laughs> so... Um, I mean, it's kind of just glaring examples that just prove the case, I think. Um, what the hell was it? Ah, damn it. But, I mean, it's just kind of obvious that you, we kind of, you know, you kind of know that if you were... it's You're sort of dependent on the culture that raises you and the people that raise you and the environment you're exposed to and everybody who's been great at something was great at it because they were exposed at, to it. I mean, come on, it's just stupid. Um, oh, this are, but there's a just a decisive argument. I can't think of it at the moment. But anyway, I don't know. It'd be nice if I could think of the decisive argument. Uh, let's see. Prim brain. What else is there? Uh, oh, damn it. But anyway, when I think of it, I'll, you <laughs> know, whatever. Shit weenie. I don't know what that means, so I think I'll just delete it because it just doesn't really mean anything. Uh, do you think those who are developing AI are adding in feelings? So this is Cato the Wiser, who doesn't, you know, who isn't very wise. Uh, but this is just such a stupid question. I mean, you're just saying if somebody had any kind of knowledge of any, I had thought about the subject for a second had asked themselves this stupid question. They'd say, boy, that's a stupid question. Because what do you think? They got some kind of feeling bag somewhere? <laughs> they just say, okay, uh, just add a feeling module. Uh, you know, somehow you could make one of those. 
in a laboratory somewhere? And then how, how would you develop the feeling module? I mean, how would you be able to, I mean, it has to be able to tell you what it's feeling, right? It has to be able to somehow indicate what feels good and what feels bad. So somehow it has to be connected to something that can give you information about what the feeling is. I mean, you can't even imagine how you would actually, you know, develop this feeling thing you know, without torturing it through the process of your experiments because there'd be a point where it's mute and it can't express what it's feeling so you could be torturing it and you wouldn't know it I mean, um, just, uh, just such a stupid question no, I obviously I don't think they're adding feelings, <laughs> duh because I don't think they have any way of knowing um, you know, that what creates a feeling what and look, it's all part of, for us, it's all part of a, a, a machine that, you know, is, it's, I hate to say the word illusion, but I mean, it's, it's generating kind of a hologram. It's a real thing, but it's, it's not what it, um, it doesn't have the same, it's not obeying the same rules as the material reality. It's an image of the reality. And sort of, you could say that's what we're living in is an image of a reality, but not you know, the the feel of verse, you know, whatever you want to call that, the sensations and the, you know, the qualia thing um, is something generated as an emergent thing, um, but it isn't made out of physical potatoes, you know, it's not made out of, you know, it's a byproduct of the arrangement of physical potatoes. It's what potatoes do when you put a certain number of them together in a certain arrangement. All right, but anyway, I've sort of talked about that before. There seems to be a mass shooting every week. Yeah, I wouldn't know. I don't really pay any attention. Just seems like we should never leave our house. Well, I don't think the threat is really st still pretty low. You know, it's probably more likely to be killed at the shopping center or something uh, by a non-shooter, you know, by a, you know, <laughs> fat lady driving badly um this guy is really this guy is ready to protect his family oh isn't that wonderful a gun nut video no doubt you should do the same in Mendham yeah no I don't think I will uh so I think I just delete this but I'm sure this is just stupid now let's go see what it is but I'm sure it's just stupid oh this guy who's what Sitting in his living room. Oh, there's his gun. Isn't that cute? So we know that that won't protect his family. The likelihood is if he has a family and he has a gun in the house, the bullets are more likely to hit his own kids than any real rapist or perpetrator of some kind or uh, psycho killer. Yes, a lot less of more kids will get killed than psycho killers. <laughs> That's a statistical fact. And so you should say I should ignore the statistical fact and have my children shot. No, I don't have any. Fuck you, you're an idiot. Yeah, speaking of idiots, Quintuka. Uh, what's all this then? Hey, Gary, <clears throat> I would like to make you laugh. Uh, yeah, you know, <laughs> go for it. But I do not know uh, that I can. Well, there are some things I could laugh at. Um, no. But anyway, sometimes I have this daydream that the world is ending. Okay, and you and a bunch of your YouTube guys are slowly boiling to death in a collapsed flooding building. Well, that's no good, boiling to death. <laughs> Yo, I mean, that's... Fuck you. <laughs> yeah, you and Piro. Well, Piro's an asshole, so I've already drowned him. Um, and Anaconda and Hoffaday, well, yeah, I've drowned all of them already. And many others and myself are stewing, waiting for the world to end. Yuck. It sounds all quite horrible. Ugh. What an awful broth that is making. And everyone is utterly miserable, uh, but you have a slowly growing smirk on your face. 
Okay, that makes sort of a little sense. Uh, then your smirk becomes a smile. Piro says you were right, yes. And, and the kind of vibe says it would appear that way, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but appearances don't mean anything. Arthur Day will say, well, he is not wrong. Yeah, so that's kind of funny. Uh, Ray Wallace says, so that's uh, whatever the hell he is, Snake Pliskinist. Yeah, but what does it matter, or does it matter? Yes, well, he'll wishy-washy. I wonder what happened to him. Did he ever make it back from France? Did he get Juliet? You know, what happened? I haven't uh, kept up. I mean, well, I don't know if he made a video. <laughs> I haven't. My subscription thing was all broken, so I don't know what's been going on. Yeah, I should just go find his channel and see. with some kind of stupid guy channel. And maybe I say, <clears throat> uh, but I disagree with the argument. Um, whether I'm right or wrong, I mean, it seems like you can pick a side. And everyone is miserably fixated on the end of all things while you are laughing out loud. Yes, well, it would be comforting to know it's finally, after millions of years, it's over. The horror ends. Then in our death rows, you say, thank you, thank you. See, I told you. I told you, fucktards. Well, I probably will enjoy dancing on your graves and such. Uh, then we all have a good laugh together and die. Uh, okay. Well, I, I wish it worked that way. <laughs> you know, Only this thought comforts me. Yes, well, because you've kind of perverted how it really works. The dying thing isn't going to be that much fun. Blah, 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 blah. But yes, I will continue to do that rocking on thing. Let's see, and then this repeats endlessly and you maintain zero recollection. Yes, that's how bad it is. Just recycling dumbass. So you get smart enough to know you're in a mess. And uh, unfortunately, the versions of you who aren't smart enough to do that yet, <laughs> they're too, too young and stupid. They just make more mess. So you clean up the mess and you just, the new mess makers make some more. Uh, the stupidest thing ever besides God is calling God he. Well, I don't know, it seems sort of a rule of the story, you know. Um, and there is an order to things. But there are physics that tell you they got the order the wrong way. I mean, it seems kind of obvious that the woman came first because men have nipples. You know, it just doesn't make any sense. Sort of makes us the weird copy, you know. Um, anyway, 100% of human refers to fucking God as male. Well, obviously because he did the inseminating of the female kind of thing, you know. He did the virgin birth crap, so that sort of proves the maleness. Why would a fuck be a male? Whatever that means. Why not a female or a it? Uh, see how ridiculous it the God concept is the God concepts makes me pink pink um anyway um yes it's silly but uh, I don't know if yours is a very good reason your chauvinism doesn't seem like the reason to say it's a stupid idea all right you know in the future the light from this plant has already extinguished uh, tomorrow has passed already. Uh, so it's just plain mush. I mean, I don't even know. You can't make any sense out of that at all. I mean, the light, is, is, it's one of the catches to this whole thing, is the, you know, what deteriorates last. And I guess the last thing to be destroyed when finally this little earth thing does collapse. The last thing that'll, the last remnant that'll take the longest to get rid of, the last fingerprint, the last, you know, material piece of evidence will likely be the radiation, you know, the radio broadcasts of, you know, the Ben and Jerry show or whatever the fuck, you know, some tripe and crap of our culture that's been shot into space and is flying, <laughs> you know, as a pattern, um, <clears throat> but degrading with time you know it will weaken and um, eventually be consumed uh, by the chaos hey and mendham have you 
you seem really stressed nowadays. You should play video games. Yeah, fuck you. They can be good outlet, but don't go to porn. It can be a nasty addiction. Yeah, whatever. Can just silly nonsense. Um, obviously, I have stated in the past that just video games are. If you want to just waste get through your life as quickly as possible play video games because yes it's quite addictive and it's um, you just lose yourself in the, the little challenges and um, yeah you'll your life will <laughs> disappear um, more quickly but anyway uh, and porn is, you know, whatever. It's all porn. And porn is being, being alive as a kind of porn. Uh, it just doesn't, whatever. You know. uh, I mean, what... I wouldn't even have invented porn in the typical sense of porn because to me it's not all that interesting. But anyway... Um, at the end of the video, the topic of anxiety came up. Oh, this is why it's mad. Yeah, you, I got your email. Okay. So, the, you know, PSA, whatever that is, uh, uh, post <laughs> um, sissy attack. <laughs> I don't know. Preposterous sissy attack. If you have anxiety issues, seek five ketamine treatments. They work. Oh, IV. IV, yeah, okay. Right, yeah, that really would have been like 15. Um, I, whatever. Yeah, okay. I mean, like, um, every, you know, this is like Laetrile and all the other pseudo medical treatment bullshit. You know, so there's always some idiot who just miraculously recovered, uh, you know, just recovered by coincidence. And they say, oh, that's what this did it. You know, standing on my head cured me. And, you know, it didn't really have anything to do with it. Um, but whatever, fine. If it worked for you, I'm glad that you're somehow, you take this chemical and somehow the chemical knows exactly what parts of you are um, irrationally conditioned. And it gets rid of your irrational conditioning. I mean, you know, the concept just doesn't make much sense because clearly a lot of people that have anxiety have it for good reason. I mean, it sort of makes sense like the feral cats. There's a sensible kernel to it. It exists for a reason because you're supposed to run away from shit. You're not supposed to jump in it. Um, and, <laughs> you know, there's a certain logic to... Um, learning through reward and punishment and all of that kind of stuff and you're trying to unwrite that and to say you can do it with some sledgehammer chemical that's going to just miraculously give you relief from your anxiety without any consequential retardation i find it doubtful but whatever fine 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 the world is just a barrel organ, which the Lord God turns himself. Okay, we all have to dance to the tune which is already on the drum. Yeah, but that doesn't mean anything, as I've pointed out. Um, the very fact that we can know that, the very fact that we can know that I am being influenced and triggered and um, that... Uh, um, the environment is is throwing a bunch of stuff at me. The truth is, though, my brain does do this equation thing. I can know in my brain that there's better and worse. There's a rounder wheel than this wheel. This wheel's not quite round. This wheel's round. I can tell the difference between the two. So there's some of this where logic will give me some mechanism through which to uh, choose well rather than choose incidentally based on mere circumstances so something can influence me and I have a defense against it replacing my round wheel with a triangle wheel so I'm not completely a victim of just something called culture or environment or this time in history or any of that crap because some of the logic that can be applied is timeless and is 
empirical is, is, is established by undeniable evidence um, and so we're not um, entirely drones in the sense that yes we're but the part of what we're droning we can be part of a logic Borg so you're still a Borg but the Borg is doing things like saying round wheel better than square wheel so you can be part of a Borg that says round wheel better than square wheel or you can be part of a Borg that says we well, can't tell the difference all wheels are equal blah 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 you know something stupid like that anyway <clears throat> Renard Hendrick's last words on his deathbed says somebody um <laughs> but anyway it says, it says they're okay as last words i mean it's good to point out um you know the roller coasterness or whatever the whole blah 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 of it all um so it's good somebody um says something maligning the game in a way um as last words but that malign is a little bit overstated in the sense that it doesn't account for the fact that some of the stuff on the wheel, some of the stuff, some parts of the tune are, um, have integrity as um, logical bits of understanding. There are truths that can be learned that are good to have on the wheel, the drum, Anyway, it seems reasonable, especially with Gary's view of life, that if a new chemistry of life came into being on Earth, it would be quickly wiped out by the defenses of the existing life. No, the argument can be made both ways. It's either going to get itself ass kicked, or it's going to kick ass. And we see that with viruses that show up like AIDS or something else, and you know, we have no immunity, and blah, 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 blah. And, you know, if something like that was ever airborne, <laughs> you know, as a virus, I mean, just imagine the carnage. Um, so, you know, we've been lucky that, uh, you know, something hasn't shown up. Um, but to say that there's some rule that says uh, the new thing has to be intrinsically weaker, I would argue, is probably a something you just wish would be true not something that would factually be true and what we see is uh, in evolution is a lot of compromise you see a lot of symbiotic parasitism happening between organisms there's a there's an innate um, value to learning how to eat somebody else's shit and there's a innate value to um, you know, having somebody else process the world for you or die for you and all that kind of stuff. So obviously there's, there's, you know, <laughs> there's advantage to having other things in the world to exploit. And so um, killing everything isn't the right strategy. Um, and it's not what life is made in terms of its defenses are not that kind of defense. Its defenses are to specific things that already exist, not to, that, to things that it has a long time relationship with. Anyway, the conditions, I mean, obviously nothing's, you know, there's very few things getting exterminated by anything other than the fact that they lack any environment that's suitable to live in. Um, the conditions are not just the same to gain information about how life likely life chemistry is or not the conditions are just not the same uh, so I, I, <laughs> I don't even know what that means to gain information which doesn't have anything to do with the subject I don't think of um, whether or not there should be other variants on the model of life and that there's plenty of sterile environments on Earth and in the Earth where something could arise, just like our abiogenesis moment, and it has a little subtle different DNA st structure, and it should have been able to exist if life was something that happens all the time. It should be happening all the time, and it's not happening all the time. Even though there's a ton of all the building blocks right here, doesn't even have to you know you don't have to make all the products and you have so much it's like 
like making a, a car with no junkyard is a lot harder than making a card with a junkyard a car so um, it's kind of stupid to say <clears throat> that this isn't a good test environment when this is an excellent test environment because all the car parts are sitting here so all you have to do is put the wheels on and do the you know you don't have to make the wheels and you don't have to make the steering wheel and you don't have to make the dashboard and you don't have to make the seats and you don't have to make all that stuff huge advantage and yet still doesn't happen and I say that's a statement <laughs> it's a piece of information that points out that life doesn't just happen it's not just like oh yeah you just you just put some oxygen on a planet and poof <laughs> life happens it just happens there it is you know no work required with dissonant physics physicists it's possible that none of them are right and yes I'm sort of saying they're all wrong <laughs> so uh, yes, I've proven that by um, being actually right. And so all the other dissident physicists, were, so all dissident physicists were wrong until I showed up. And now I made them right by making, you know, in the sense that the dissident part was right. Um, but yes, they were all wrong until I showed up. It's happened to be that way. Uh, you clearly have great genes. Have you ever considered becoming a sperm donor for 560, oh, another racist, ooh, million African women? Uh, with your high IQ and empathy, you could lift hundreds of millions out of crippling poverty. Yes, and they could be lifted by a philosophy, an ideology. It's just, again, you people who think people genetically have a philosophy so that the you're saying that all the Arabs would be Muslims and they could never be anything else and that's just the way it is and the, no matter where I raise them they'll be a Muslim I mean it's just so fucking stupid um, and reduce suffering within a generation so another fake person no doubt fake icon fake 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 all over the place so another liar for the cause wow you're so convincing you liars <laughs> you know ooh no not really <sighs> whatever I wish there was more ways to spread message and Mendham's message he's one of the actual honest people left in the world well I suppose that's true uh, A.W. Uh, oh, A.W. was his screen name. Okay. <laughs> um, I spread the message of analytism in almost every other website I go to. Yes, Daniel does seem to be a hard worker here. Um, but anyway, from hip-hop websites to history forums, I speak about analytism and chance I can. And honestly, people seem receptive to what I say. Not everyone, but a good amount. Uh, spread the word by chance or place word any chance or place you can when appropriate uh, yes um, seems reasonable uh, you know I, likewise um, it is a little bit of a tricky subject you know because it does get personal with people that already have kids and all that kind of crap and they get horribly defensive but yes you have to do it with a little bit of humor <laughs> <laughs> I talk about it in public now uh, to strangers, people I meet in bars, Uber pool drivers, car passengers, friends, etc. Tonight I pointed a dude towards Mendham's channel. He wrote in Mendham YouTube on a serviette or whatever that is and put it in his wallet. I hope it looks, he looks up this wonderful channel. Yes, well, I, you know, who knows? Maybe he'll comment, and then we'll know. Anyway, uh, so this is A.W. again. I am a misanthropic asshole, and yearn to see the world end. Well, that's not a very good statement, because, you know, your personal um, incompatibility shouldn't be the statement. The statement should be that the, the incompatibility is reasonable and sensible, and um, that everybody should share it <laughs> you know that kind of thing you have to get there first you have to get to the point of pointing out how it's illogical to embrace a meat grinder as a uh, good game for kids to play 
Uh, why does the Chad think chicks are offensive? I don't know. They use really bad words. I don't know what that means. I don't know what to say, so I'll just move on. Uh, is freedom of speech important? Well, it would be if it's under the context that you should be free to speak if you're not lying. I mean, that's one of the important things, right? So it's the whole, you should be able to freely speak something uh, that's honestly thought or um, explain what you honestly feel. But as soon as you make it dishonest and turn it into propaganda or some other um, bullshit, then in some sense, why would that be important? Because that's just deception and fraud and phony and fake. So again, it's the, the, the whole thing is you're allowed to yell fire in a theater if the theater is on fire. If the theater is not on fire, you're not allowed to yell fire. So that standard seems to me quite sensible. Okay. To me, it's very important. Well, I don't know why it's very important. And I don't know how exactly it's even a subject. I mean, you're, you're pretty free to speak unless what you want to speak is a plan to take over the you know government or something <laughs> I don't know you're, you're 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 not free to do something overtly illegal right um why uh because without a society it without it in because without it the society will become antisocial and the consequences of that can be devastating. I don't even know what that means. Complications, consequences, problems of antisocial personality may include, for example, so what does this have to do with free speech? Spousal abuse of children, abuse and neglect, alcohol and substance abuse, uh, being in jail or prison. Well, obviously all these things are not great things. To, you know, I don't know what all this crap is. Uh, so. Let's see what this is. Right to free speech is a principle that supports the freedom of an individual or a community to articulate their opinions. Right. Now, say if they're sincere opinions, then it's okay. And ideas without fear of retaliation, censorship, legal sanction, with some ex exceptions. Well, so, so it's not free. <laughs> so, so again, so what's, the, what's the point? The word free is stupid. It should have never been invented. It's just a useless word. For example, we're not allowed to harm others with false accusations or fraud. Well, we certainly are allowed to. That's the whole problem. And by allowing that to happen, free speech is being um, maligned as the cause of that. And that's not what free speech is supposed to be. So again, it's that's the whole problem here. If you don't enforce rules, then uh, the good ideas get mixed with the bad ideas. You know. Random happiness. Uh, I don't know what that's about, but I'm not going to a time code. I mean, it's just so silly to put a time code with something that says nothing. Random happiness. LOL. He sometimes reads the words incorrectly. I always get a kick out of it. Yes, I do that. I'm, I have fairly poor um, grammars. Well, it's not my, my grammar's all that bad. Well, anyway, I lack some, uh, um, whatever. There's, yes, I'm not perfect at um, reading. There, there, that's a good enough, that's a good enough statement. <laughs> yeah, I don't read perfectly. Uh, but anyway, all right, I'll leave whatever that crap is. Uh, if there's one thing I learned from watching you, Gary, it's this. If you're an asshole, you're an asshole could just write asshole. It doesn't matter whether you're in Mendham or out of Mendham. It doesn't matter where you're located. If you're an asshole someplace, you'll be yeah, this is an asshole some other place. Lesson learned. Okay, whatever. Uh, the reason I added, oh, so this is a woot comment. W-O-T. So this has been some ass troll so again, so if you're a liar one place, then you're a liar on another channel, and you're just a fraud and a liar. No matter where you go, you're a liar and a fraud. Oh, isn't that interesting? All right, the reason I added whatever is because YouTube censored my first comment without the... So they censored asshole? I don't think so. 
And since you're so concerned about free speech, Gary, uh, I don't. I just as I just pointed out, I guess I'm not terribly concerned. I thought that would be one uh, be of interest to you the fact that you do business with an organization that has a problem with profanity. Well, again, I don't really do business with them, right? I mean, no ads on my videos, so I'm not really making any money for them in any um, aggressive way at all in any complicit way and all I'm attempting to try to do is be on the best um, forum to try to be um, connected to people uh, on the internet and the fact that we have not created any ways to do that in a public way in the sense of something the public owns and instead have decided to let capitalists build everything and do everything for us isn't my choice. All right. I voted for the uh, public option, the public option internet. I voted for that. <laughs> okay, it's raining assholes. Yes, that's true. The one you're interacting with is a big asshole. More like he's a moron. I used to have respect, but that shit's long gone. Uh, rubbish, uh, hypocritical character. Whatever that hypocritical, and, and again, there'll be no statement to defining with where this hypocrisy exists. I uh, don't know why he bothers if he's so important. Uh, and again, the, these videos are discussions about how I'm really important and everybody must do everything for me and I must have everything. <laughs> I don't think so. I'm truly only here for his audience. I'm also unsubscribed. Gee, that's just so interesting. So this is spiritual opportun... What does that say? Opportunism? Isn't, isn't that like slandering both words? <laughs> yeah. God. Ew. How disgusting. So anyway, fuck this whole thread in the ass until it's dead. That. These woke channels are just all troll channels, so they are insta blocked. Uh, yeah, so more people who have a you know a whole sentence as a screen name. Yes, always. I'm always past that. Well, that's just weird. If there's one thing I've learned from watching you, Gary, Gary, <coughs> it's this. If you're an ass, oh, we already did this. Uh, yeah, I think we already did this. So I guess I'll. Get rid of that. I'll just remove it. Fuck it. All right. Um, do you like to learn? Please visit thefinetruth.org. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's what it will be. Uh, how can we define truth? What is truth? Oh, here we go. I believe that math can be used as a good example of truth. So again, we invented the whole thing. The, the words just are obviously, obviously round and square are different. Oh, yes, so we can figure out obvious things that are different. But we're talking about much more subtle truths than, you know, the fact that we have a word called one, and then we have a word called two, and then we can go one plus one equals two. I mean, <laughs> yeah, so those are going to be really hard truths. But most of the truths aren't going to be that hard because we don't get to label them that explicitly. Well, I've already said all this, but whatever. Uh, fuck you. Sorry, uh, Stacy. But, but, yeah. What the fuck? Anyway, one of my best channels, along with David Icky, Donald Hoffman, and Dollar Vinaigrate, whatever that is, David Icky, uh, the Lizard Man. Yeah, so uh, I'm sure Mendham will take that as an insult, and rightfully so. Yes, I probably will. All right. So I think I've already read this. This is another Daniel comment. To anyone reading this who disagrees with antinatalism, why would you risk bringing a child into the world knowing how much agony and suffering occurs here? Why would you risk? That's the whole question. I mean, what makes you think you're so special that you'll have control and that you won't have the horror happen to you? You won't have the autistic kid or the kid with a freaking encephalitis or 
Siamese twins or some other horror, some mess you have no hope of cleaning up. Why do you think you're immune? Uh, it's just, it's like a having the gun and you're pulling the trigger at somebody's head, you know, a kitten's head. And you're just saying, well, there's 69 chambers and there's only four bullets and the odds are with me. <laughs> you know, some kind of bullshit. I mean, it's just, it's irrational. All right, so I think that's all enough of a video and such. So forth and more than I really think that's enough. Oh, look at all this crap. Oh, it's that spiritual idiot. Um, so anyway, yeah, probably should read it, but I'm done, I think. Uh, okay. So anyway, so till the next time and such and so forth and whatnot. Uh, yeah. So it was good enough. Enough of a video. I know I'm promising better, but yeah, I haven't got there yet. Working on it. Big plans. Blah blah blah. And such. <sighs>